<clears throat> Good morning. Hey, everybody on YouTube. This is Rick Thomas from Obsolete Video Services. Uh, I thought I'd post a final video on this 1-inch BVH2000 Sony machine. Uh, prior to the video I just posted, I got a bunch of emails on some questions, and it, I didn't realize that, that this, this particular video would be such a hit. But apparently a lot of you collectors out there, people in television, people who are retired, a lot of questions from people out there who actually like this machine and ask me a very uh, moderate amount of questions about this machine. So let me try to answer all the questions in this final video. Sorry about this, folks. I have to post this in separate videos. I know a lot of people would rather see it all in one, but, but my last video was a very big hit. I did get quite a few emails about it, so... Let me walk you through some of the questions people have been asking me. Uh, first of all, as you can see, I'm, I'm running this movie, Lady Frankenstein, which uh, if that black bar would ever move around, it's a very good movie. It's a test tape I'm using on this machine, which is a one inch type C format. But I got several emails on a particular thing. Somebody said that if you're using one of these machines, do you always have to use like a time-based corrector? Well, if you're using a one-inch machine like this and it's actually working, you do need a time-based corrector. There's two reasons for this. Uh, if you try to copy a tape directly from a machine like this, sometimes uh, these machines are not perfect. I mean, these tapes have all kinds of flaws and issues. And if the video heads are really dirty or the guides are off, a lot of people mess with the guides on these things. It's going to throw the video signal off where it's not going to play properly. It might look good on your, on your television, but then when you try to copy it to like a, a DVD or something like that, different types of electronics interpret, interpret the signal a different way. So the video may not look that good. I don't recommend trying to transfer off of one of these BVH-2000s without an external time-based corrector. This is broadcast television. They were used in machine rooms that use TBCs, and you need to have a TBC or time-based corrector if you're trying to feed the video signal out. Modern electronics may interpret the video signal differently, and the video might, lot look, it might not look that good. So a time-based corrector would secure the way the video is being transferred from one unit to the other. It actually... It actually corrects the issues of the video. That's why you use a time-based corrector. So I recommend a time-based corrector. Don't try to use one of these without one. That's, that's the response I give to, I think, four emails that I got. Now, I got another email from somebody who was asking me, where do you get the parts for these machines? Ugh, that's a whole nother question. Unless you have like one or two or three of these machines that are complete junk that you could part out or even just one, each machine has different wear and tear. They're not all the same. They, um, some were beat to hell. Some weren't that bad where some parts were still good and you could transfer them to another machine. So parts are a must. I do have parts on this machine that I've scrapped out from one junk machine that I keep on hand. It's not a lot of stuff, but it's enough to help me fix some of the issues. Uh, when it comes to video heads, I had to get a video head off eBay for this thing. And yeah, it, they're not easy to find or cheap. So parts for this particular machine, uh, if, you, if you get the option to get more than one of these machines, grab it. Because you're going to need, to build one, you're going to need other machines that are junk for parts. Guarantee you. Especially the cards. Uh, the cards on this unit, the capacitors are starting to dry out. And you're going to have what's called color fluctuations. And they, you really do need to replace the capacitors on these things. But a lot of people don't want to bother with it. So if you have extra cards you can swap out. To troubleshoot the problem, it's, it, it's, it's a good idea to have machines like this for parts. But in my case, I, I basically, what I do is I replace the capacitors if the video is starting to shift, if the color is starting to shift. Usually it means the capacitors are drying out and not working right. So on several boards on this unit these past couple days, I replaced the capacitors to get the color back to where it belongs. Um, if you can see this, I know you see that black line on the screen, but the color locks up real nice. The video looks really good. And that usually pertains to the capacitors being dried out on these units. It, it, it will get funky if it doesn't have good color lock. A lot of times the capacitors are dried out. So you need to be an electronics technician and you need to know how to replace capacitors or have extra machines for parts to do a fast, quickie uh, swap of a card if one of them is starting to fail. 
And it does matter to have machines for parts. You need parts for these machines. Hope that answered your question. Okay, and I believe I have a final question from a guy. I think it was in New Zealand who was asking me about, basically he was asking me about the connections on the back. He says, how does an average person in, in video that's really never worked in television understand how a lot of the video ports and what they do? Okay, very simple. All right, for the average Joe at home who might have one of these to make a tape copy, uh, I recommend this. First of all, I keep talking about time-based correction. There are time-based correctur- correction uh, correctors that actually plug into the BNC video outs on these. That's a very simple solution. Um, you do video out, BNC video out to a time-based corrector to whatever you're capturing from. But as far as finding the time-based corrector that originally plugged in the back of one of these, good luck. That was a special unit that was provided with these units when they were new. And they're, they're not easy to find. They're pretty hard to find. But I would prefer having an original time-based corrector that came with the unit. But I don't really need one now since I did score a television broadcast rack time-based corrector, which is all you need. So, But for the average person who's just having fun with one of these or making copies, you need a time-based corrector that connects to the BNC video out and you connect to the source that you're recording. Time-based correctors are very important. Uh, as far as keeping your fans clean, I had a guy ask me. I said, well, once in a while, unscrew this, open up the door, take an air compressor with a nozzle, and blow out your fans if you're going to use one of these a lot. I mean, because if these fans get too dirty, the machine will lock up. In, it basically, the alarms will go off, and the cooling will it could damage the machine because the cooling, these machines do get very hot. So you need to fix the... You blow out the dust and dirt out of the fans. It's very important. But I have a lot of fans on this machine, and this is the final video on this, folks. I just got done rebuilding the machine completely. I rebuilt the cards, which needed some capacitors, which were dried out on the color section of the unit. I replaced the video head, which I had to get off eBay. And I did a thorough cleaning. I did all the adjustments. I did all the tension adjustments. And also, I did the audio alignments, because the audio was completely off. Uh, there was about, I think about 10 different things I did on this unit. I wanted to get this thing as close to possible like it was when it was new. Uh, of course, that's not real possible unless you, unless you have all brand new capacitors on this unit. But, but all the ones that were problematic, I did change out to get the machine to work as good as, as it is working now. But like I said, guys, you need a rack. You need a, you need a jack to jack one of these things up. And they get very hot. But this is the coolest machine, if you're in the video and you love electronics, this is the coolest machine you can have, besides having a 2-inch quad, which I have in my storage area, this is the coolest machine you can have for at-home video to mess around with 1-inch broadcast formats. This is the coolest machine you'll ever find. It's really cool. So I hope I answered some of your questions, guys. You need a lot of parts. You need to have service manuals. You need to have more than one machine if you're going to try to to uh, restore one of these because these machines take a beating. There's, you know, they do need a lot of parts when they go bad, and you need heads. And it's just if you want to put in the time and trouble, it's fine. But I use this for customers. It's the only reason I do these repairs. I would not repair one of these just for fun. It's, it's not worth it. It's a lot of work. Expensive. You got to have a lot of money to fix one of these. So if you're in a television and you're doing transfers for customers and you want to learn how to do this, I, I would be glad to teach anybody. But like I said, I'm in Arizona, and, and you know, you'd have to be around me all the time to understand what I do. But, you know, but I hope it gives you insight into one of the coolest machines ever, a one-inch Type-C broadcast machine from the late 80s, early 90s. I hope you guys enjoyed this video.